Have you ever asked yourself, why don't I complete my terminal degree? Why don't I finish what I've started and complete the last degree that I possibly could get? What's holding me back? I ask myself these very questions, and I'm here to tell you why, after 18 years, I decided to go back and obtain my professional doctorate degree. I'm a graduate of the class of 2024, Virginia University of Lynchburg, doctorate of healthcare administration. Virginia University of, thank you, oh, thank you. <laughs> Virginia University of Lynchburg is an HBCU, um, right in Lynchburg, Virginia. And I thought it was important for me to go back and complete my doctorate there at an HBCU because I've never experienced going to one. So let me tell you about my why. But before I tell you about my why, let me tell you about little Leron. Little Leron grew up in Rochester, New York, specifically the 19th Ward, the son of migrants from the South as well as from Jamaica. He did not have any doctors or lawyers in his family or friend groups, so he didn't really understand, besides his pediatrician, of course, he didn't really see what it was like to be a doctor. But that all changed when my mom, who bought home a homesick resident, medical resident specifically, she wanted a home-cooked meal, she missed her family, she was in Rochester from, uh, you know, further from Maryland specifically, and she was an African-American woman, doctor, physician specifically, and mom brought her home, and I still remember the experience because she came home, she ate with us, she had a home-cooked meal for the first time, but mom needed ice cream specifically for her famous apple pie. So she sent me and Dr. Margaret, her name was, to the grocery store to get some ice cream. And I remember driving to the grocery store with Dr. Margaret in her baby blue RX-7, which was a cool car back then, versus our family sedan, of course. So being in that, that RX-7 and then getting to the grocery store, we got the brand name ice cream, which was a big deal, versus the, uh, the store brand, which is what we typically got. So that experience just planted a seed within me. I just remember just seeing someone, and it was representation. And that planting that seed was really important for me because then I truly can see I could achieve that if I really put my mind to it. So before I talk about my why again, let me talk about the difference between a PhD and a professional doctorate. Because most people will say, oh, you got your doctorate, you're not a physician, you're a PhD, right? Well, technically not. The main difference between a PhD and a professional doctorate is PhDs typically look for original research. They're trying to find and solve problems using new ideas versus a professional doctorate that is taking that research and applying it to everyday situations right within their career field. PhDs also require residency and much, much research. I didn't have that luxury of stopping, working, and taking care of my family to dedicate my whole to a uh, PhD. So I chose a professional doctorate route, which allowed me to still take care of my family, still able to work in my career field, while still going back to school and taking what I was learning in the classroom and bringing it to my work environment. So my why, you're probably interested. Let me tell you about my why. Why did I go back after 18 years of walking these very halls of Nazareth University and go back to school? It was a challenge, but I like challenges. And that's the main reason I went, one of my main reasons is specifically because I like to see a goal and achieve that goal. Most people run a 5K here, a 10K there, maybe a half marathon if you're lucky. Then you'll see the rarer folks do the marathon. Well, I chose and set my goal to run a marathon. And I didn't just stop at one, I did three marathons. So I just like setting that goal, I like achieving the goal, and just going for it and seeing it there. And that middle picture you're gonna see right there is me doing a triathlon, which is a swim, bike, and a run. Unfortunately, I didn't know how to swim. So that's gonna be a little difficult when you do a triathlon. So I learned enough to swim. I got a basic stroke, just enough to get by. And that's me doing my first triathlon. As you notice, there's no one around me because I was the last person out of the water. <laughs> Dead last. And the canoes, see them circling behind me? That's because they were worried if I was gonna come out of the water. So 
the canoe circling, me getting out of the water, but I finished the triathlon. It was all fine. And I actually did another one. And in that triathlon, I did much better. I actually came in second in my age group. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> another example of me setting a goal and achieving that goal is me specifically going for Taekwondo. So most people get a black belt in Taekwondo and they think, oh, I'm gonna stop there, that's good. Well, I had to keep going, I got five of them. So I got a fifth degree black belt, which made me a master instructor in Taekwondo. Again, it's just because I like to set goals, achieve them, and go for it. My other why is I specifically like to, I wanted to do something for those before me that could not do it. So my aunt, great, great aunt, turns out, was applying for school at Georgia State University in the early 50s. Well, Georgia State was a segregated school at the time, and uh, they didn't get the memo of Brown v. Board of Education that integrated all public schools in the United States in the early 50s. She applied for admission and was denied because of her race. So she sued. Her and her co-plaintiffs took Georgia State to court, and they won in a federal court case, Hunt v. Arnold. And in that court case, she was allowed or permitted by law to get admission to the school. Unfortunately, Georgia State found other crafty ways to keep her and her co-plaintiffs from getting admission into the school. For her, they told her she was too old and said, you can't get admission because you're too old. It's not because you're racist, because you're too old. For her co-plaintiffs, it was, it was because they had children out of wedlock. So it, a sad, sad thing, and unfortunately she died before she ever got admission to that university. But the good news is in 2021, uh, Georgia State issued an apology and actually granted my aunt and the co-plaintiffs honorary degrees. She wasn't around to receive it, so I actually ste stepped in for her and um, received the, f the degree for her posthumously, as well as the, uh, the co-plaintiffs, one of the other co-plaintiffs' uh, daughter received her degree. But one of them was alive, Miss Myra, and at 90, she was so excited to get her bachelor's degree. She was so excited. There she is in the wheelchair right in the front. And all this is told in the story, um, Ground Crew, um, which is a really good book if you want to take a look and understand what um, happened in the whole history of the court case and how it came to be. But again, my why is because I wanted to do this for those who, before me who could not do it. My next why are my daughters, teenage daughters, Layla and Sierra Rowe. I wanted to be a living example for them to show them with a little bit of hard work, dedication, time, and setting your goals, you can achieve anything. So they saw me struggle. They saw me work late at night. They saw me get up early in the morning. And I really wanted them to see that example so that when they set their goals, when they put their mind to something, they could achieve anything. So what was holding me back? Two things. My dad used to say, all things can be accomplished with time and money. Time, I didn't have a lot of it. Um, busy family, work. There was a lot going on there. I had to make up time, so I just found the time, early mornings, late nights, whatever it took to get the studying in, to get the papers written. Money, it's always a factor. Um, I'm thankful that my wife and I were able to figure out how to finance my education. So overcoming those obstacles and figuring out what was holding me back is really what led me to keep going. So my question for you today is, what is your why? What is your reason behind the reason? Why do you want to accomplish, a, get a marathon or get your terminal degree? Ask yourself, what is holding you back? How can you overcome that and figure out what it's going to take to complete and achieve your why? As I end today, what I want you to think about is a quote from Malcolm X, specifically that education is the passport to the future, and the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. Thank you.